Welcome to Cropping with Fitzy and Christy. I'm Fitzy. And I'm Christy. I'm from Massachusetts. And I'm from South Carolina, y'all. Just, Just kidding. kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the one from South Carolina. And I'm the one from Massachusetts. And we're here to bring the North and the South together through scrapbooking and card making. But of course, it's not limited to just those of you that are in the North and the South. Um, West Coast folks and those in the Midwest, of course, you are more than welcome to join us. We're both independent advisors for Creative Memory Scrapbooking, and this is our first collaboration on YouTube. Yay! Yay! So our goal is to show you something old and something new and how those things can work together to create some beautiful projects. And our other goal is to do this once a month on Fridays. So now we're gonna go to Christy's workspace. She's gonna start. Yay. Okay, Christy, you are spotlighted. Okay, so, um. I'm going to show you the project that we're going to work on. This project was created with the um, On the Lake collection, but my idea started from wanting to make some pockets because of the Denim Revival collection that we came out with, that Creative Memories came out with. I don't have all my photo mats on here. I just noticed that. So this would hold a photo. There's a four by four here. And of course, you've got a journaling box here. But um, a few years ago, Creative Memories had um, a denim collection that was part of the You've Got This um, collection. I'm, I'm forgetting the exact name of it. I think but that's what it was called. I think it was, wasn't it? So yeah. just You've Got This. And I will always feel like I need to call it something else, but it's because... You've got this had two parts to it, and I think that's why I get so confused. So anyway, so I wanted to, I know that the Denim Revival collection, actually, you can get some embellishments that are pockets, but I felt like, you know, you're going to run out of pockets, or you might want to make a pocket for a different collection, like I did here with the On the Lake. And the thing about the pocket is, look, you can, of course, my fingernails aren't going to help me cooperate <laughs> here, but. You can tuck some embellishments into those pockets and you could tuck a picture into the pocket. Of course, we could use our tab punch to put a tab on it so that you know that you can pull it in and in or out. But um, anyway, I just wanted to find a way to easily make some pockets. And I also wanted people to see that have the old denim collection or the new denim collection or both, how those papers can work together. So, um, so we're going to start by making our base page from the denim, from some of the papers from the denim collection. These are the ones that I'm going to use. And um, there's really no right or wrong way. I mean, you know, use whatever you want to use, but I would suggest that you do have contrast, like um, the lighter and the darker. Whereas if I used something that was maybe a little closer, I don't know that that's a great example. Um, but you know, you, you definitely want the contrast, right? And so, and you're gonna want a welding strip. And I just happen to have a welding strip already in my, um, in my stash, in my, <laughs> my leftovers. You know, I will say one other thing. I conserve paper all the time. Um, it's like I'm a paper hoarder. I don't know if any other scrapbookers can relate with that, but I, you know, I'm like, why cover up whatever this is, four, four and a half inches of a five inches of a piece of paper. Instead, just use, use the two different sizes and weld them together but if you don't want to take the time to weld, you certainly don't have to, but I am gonna weld these two pieces of paper together. So does that make sense, Michelle? Am I giving like, like am I, it um, makes am I over explaining? 
<laughs> no, you're good. <laughs> okay. I just want you to know that you don't have to weld, but if I were you, I would weld and save your paper. So, okay, let me move my, my sample out of the way so we can get started. And what we're going to need is the, the widest piece of paper is going to be cut at seven inches. Um, you know, I just now opened up my arm because I, I automatically think I need to open up the arm of my trimmer, but technically I could just measure it to the five inch mark because that would leave me with seven inches. So you do whatever makes the most sense for you and it will all be okay. So I'm going to make this cut at seven inches. And my other piece of paper is going to be cut at five inches. I'm excited right to make a pocket. Say that again. I'm excited to make a pocket. Oh, yay. I'm so glad. Well, I'm excited to teach you. Um, I am I think that I need to go ahead. There, there's really, I don't have to move my trimmer right now, but I'm going to, I'm going to move it so that I can go ahead and weld these two pieces of paper together. And um, you can make the decision on which side of the page you want your um, big piece to be on, you know, it can be on the right or the left. And I'm going to make it, at least I think I'm making it opposite from how I made the other one. I might be wrong though. Um, here's what I mean. This one, I have the big piece on the right hand side of the page and the small piece on the left hand side of the page. I'm going to try to do it the other way. And that would show uh, an example of turning this into a double page spread. But who knows? I'm directionally challenged sometimes. So I might not be making it opposite, even though I think I am. <laughs> Christy, what size, <laughs> what size strip are you using for the welding strip? Ooh. Okay, so for the welding strip, I this one was already cut at one inch. It was just down in my scrap pile. But if you could use a piece as small as a half an inch, um, I think the perfect size, you know, it's not too, not too little, not too big, is three quarters of an inch. But this one was already cut and I didn't cut it down. So um, thank you for, for reminding me <laughs> to discuss that because, yeah, it does, um, it does make a difference. Are, are, you, are you good? Yep. Okay. So I have my base and I'll just put it over on this other mat here. And now I'm going to get my trimmer back out. And we're going to talk about this pocket, this pocket that I want us to make. So it's really easy to do. And I did like kind of, I did have to try to figure out um, the best way to do this. And it, it wasn't hard except for, um, I did do a few little trial and error things. And I think I have a way to teach you how to do this. And I apologize, I didn't just now tell you. I'm cutting my five inch piece of paper down to four inches. So it's four inches wide. And now I'm gonna make it five inches long. Um, this would be a pocket that will be the perfect size to hold a three and a half inch by four inch photo. So if you want to make a bigger pocket, you can certainly do that. If you want to make a smaller pocket, you can certainly do that. But um, I did learn in a, a meeting with some Creative Memories advisor friends not too long ago from our great friend Karen Wolf that it's it's easy to make templates if you're going to be making things 
you know, more than one, just make yourself a template and you can even write notes on it to help you figure out how to do things. So I do have my little template and I'm not necessarily going to be laying it on here and tracing, but I did just want to point out the fact that um, for something like a pocket or some other kind of design that you're making, you can um, make yourself a template and then you remember what to do from one time to the next, right? <clears throat> okay, so I've got my pocket laid on my mat and I want to make a little mark in the center place. So since this is, I'm at one, two, three, four, four inches wide, then I'm gonna make my mark at the halfway point, which is, of course is two inches, right? So I'm gonna make a little mark down here at two inches. And then I'm going to take my trimmer. Oh, no, 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 that's not what I'm doing. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot my own my own instructions. <laughs> uh -oh. So I'm making the mark there, but I'm also going to come onto the mat and make a mark at five eighths of an inch. So five eighths is one tick mark past the half, the half inch. Okay. And I need to do it on both sides. You could, of course, pull out a ruler and then you won't have to go side to side on your map like what I'm doing right now. But um, just make a, make a little mark at five eighths of an inch on the sides and then the two inch mark at the bottom. And from there, you can either use your trimmer to, to cut from mark to mark, you know, lay the lay the side mark on the cut line and the the um the center mark on the cut line and i think you can see that okay but you can also use your scissors so i'm going to do one each way i'm going to cut one with my trimmer and it's just cutting that angle to make it look like a pocket and then this one i'm going to use my scissors oops i want to use my long my long scissors to cut from point to point, and I'm not always a great straight cutter, but I did pretty good. There you go. And I have a, um, what do you call them, high polymer eraser right here. So I'll get my marks off that, that are still on the front of that pocket. And when I made this pocket, I also learned, let me get my pen out. I didn't already have it out. I did learn that it's really nice to add the stitching. Let me find my sample. Y'all see how, see how I did the stitching on the edge? So pretty. So I, I came in about, an, I think it's an eighth of an inch. So have your ruler, have a ruler close by so that you can either perfectly or uh, or just kind of guesstimate how much you want to come in. But we're gonna make some stitches down the side. It will only take a second. And of course you can make them any size, any length. I will say that don't go all the way to the bottom of your pocket, like, let me hold this back up. See how I didn't go all the way to the bottom? I, I stayed up about an eighth of an inch because then I'm going to turn it and go an eighth of an inch this way, right? Does that make sense? Total. Okay. Whoops. I'm getting a little close there. The I had to make that makes little a nice difference. difference in it. Say that again? The stitching makes such a nice effect on it. Isn't it amazing? I mean, you know, I don't, I'm, I want to, I'm the kind of scrapbooker that I want to um, shoot it back and bring it home. <laughs> I want to get done fast. And I do, I almost always do very simple pages. Um, but, so I wouldn't always take the time to add stitches like this or, you know, some sort of other little 
doodling technique, but it really does. I mean, it went really fast, as you can see, because I'm finished, and you probably are too. <laughs> and it's <laughs> oh, okay. Well, sorry. That's okay. <laughs> but it, really, it really just makes a a big difference. So, so for my design. I made my pocket out of the same paper that I was using on the um, the big piece. And it contrasts with the darker paper that's on my little piece, right? But you could use a third paper. There, there's no right or wrong to how you want to, to put this together. But And I have my pocket towards the top of the, of the layout, but you can certainly do it another way. Um, I did pull out some variety mats that I'm going to use to serve as photo holders. And this layout, look, this one has a built-in journaling box. And this one is going to be a photo holder. Um, let's see. I've got I have another photo that will go here. And then I've got these these little embellishments that can come out of my pocket up here. Now, when you're adhering your pocket, <clears throat> we're only going to adhere it on the sides and the bottom. And I am a huge fan of repositionable tape runner, but I am going to use one of the stronger ones. Um, I shouldn't say stronger because to me, repo is perfectly fine, but I'm going to use regular adhesive on my pocket since things are going to be sliding in and out of it. And I'm just going to leave the top of the pocket not adhered or not, um, not stuck down, right? So leave that open so that I can slide things in and out. And I'm just going to place that towards the top of the page and then, you know, down so that it has room for things to slide in and out like that. Let me see. I'm going to layer this a little bit better. Um, I know I told you the measurements for the photo that will go on this pocket, but I didn't actually cut my mat yet. So I think this is, how wide is this? This is four inches wide and I need it to be three and a half inches tall. So I'm going to cut, let's see. I'm going to make this um, three and a half inches wide, which it's actually just over three and a half inches. So I'm barely cutting that part. And then I'm going to make this down to four inches. So this photo holder is three and a half by four. And look how it perfectly fits on that pocket. And then you can still see the stitching on the side of the pocket. Isn't that cute? <laughs> if I do say so myself. And I have some, I have some pre-made photo holders that I'm going to pop on here just to conserve time. But um, obviously, since the since the sizes are written on them, you'll know what size photo the the big photo mat or the this photo mat that I chose from the variety mats is one of the big ones, the four and a half by six and a half. So I can put my four by six photo on there. I've already told you I will use this as a journaling box and then a four by four photo. And then this one is three and a half by four. Let me write the measurements on that so that you can see how big it is. And obviously, I need to stick these these um, pieces down because I haven't put adhesive on them yet. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna cheat, not really cheat, but I'm gonna show you something that I didn't plan on showing you. But since I decided to make this page opposite from the life on the lake, look at what I've got now because I already had a denim one finished ahead of time too. So now I have a double page spread and I didn't even really plan on showing you this. <laughs> I love it. It looks so, awesome. 
So how is that? So this will hold a four by six. <clears throat> Sorry, Michelle, I didn't warn you that I was going <laughs> to, I was going to do that. And you know, I did a two page spread. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so the, the thing is too, I didn't, um, or I shouldn't say I did it. You wouldn't necessarily want two journaling boxes on a double page spread, but you never know. There might be an instance where you would. And if you don't, then just pop another, this isn't going to be the right size, but just pop another photo on top of one of the ones that you want to cover up, right? For sure. Or you could use one for journaling and one as a decorative element too. Yes, exactly. Exactly. So anyway, I hope that was okay. I feel like I... um hopefully I wasn't like just all over the place trying to explain this and teach this <laughs> to you guys. Hopefully you understand and you understand my Southern. <laughs> <laughs> but Michelle, I am very excited to see what you're going to show us. So let me okay. get my things out of the way here so we can spotlight you. Oh, well, I didn't stick this down, but I'll worry about doing that in a minute. It's not going to matter. <laughs> I'm going to share what I made from what you taught us first. Oh, yes, please. Thank you. Let me spotlight you, though. Okay. Um, give me just one second. There you are. Oh, I love it. Isn't it so pretty? So this is from the Welcome Baby Collection. Um, I still have a few baby pictures that I have recently discovered so okay I'm that gonna... is fantastic it's so pretty I love this collection I love the colors it's subtle and Definitely. it's just it. look at they're little bunnies uh-huh I love it which to me means and it's so um it's so neutral gender neutral that you could use it for a baby boy you can use it for a baby girl um and I think this is hilarious because we we literally did not discuss the fact that we were going to show double page spreads. No. And, and there you are. And then I like the way you did the pockets in the two different places, too. Yeah, I wanted to see what it would look like if I put it down the bottom and up at the top. Mm -hmm. And I like it, actually. It looks cute. right. And you've still got room for another four by four or whatever up at you the know, top or the bottom. Photo here and then I could put one on each pocket. And then I got room for photos here and I could turn this into a photo mat or a journaling box if I want, but I kind of like this. So yes, see. perfect. <laughs> good job. Um, <laughs> I must well, be a good teacher. <laughs> that must be it. I'm just going to fix my camera angle here just a little bit. All right. So what I'm going to be working on this is paper from not the last or the most recent, um, uh, what do you call it? The mystery box, but it is, oh, and I'm still a little crooked. I'm sorry. Let me just fix it. That's good. That looks That's good. That's better. Okay. So my layout, I'm going to be using two sheets from, I believe it's called... Copper Canyon, and I'm going to be using um, the Copper Shimmer cardstock, which I absolutely love. Now, I don't know if this box is available anymore on the website. I kind of think it may not be. I do mm -hmm. have a couple in stock if that's something you're looking for. All right. Okay. And I am going to show you what we are actually going to create. So taking the something old, something new into consideration. So right now with the border maker system, we have the double Rick Rack border maker cartridge. And I will tell you right now, this is my go-to cartridge for just about anything I'm creating lately. I cannot say enough about the double Rick Rack. I just love it. And what's really cool is it kind of works the same way a couple of these older BMCs work. So if you were lucky enough to get the ruffle trim, 
this is an oldie but goodie mm -hmm. or the zigzag which is another oldie but goodie <clears throat> they all work kind of the same way and by that i mean is they give a layout a fresh polished look which i love mm -hmm. so let me show so for instance on this particular layout this is a nice little Christmas layout, but look how the ruffle trim border really makes this beautiful paper in the middle just kind of jump out at you, right? And it, I love it. isn't that pretty? <laughs> love it, love it, love it. So it gives a nice, clean, polished look, which it's kind of like that finishing touch that a layout needs, right? So that's the ruffle trim. And then what I have here is the zigzag. So this is a two page spread, but look at how just this little border makes the rest of this just kind of jump off the page, right? It gives it yeah. that nice finished look. And what I love about this particular layout is there's tons of space for photos, right? You can get mm -hmm. photos could you get on here, right? So yeah, yeah, that looks great. Thank you. All right. So then what we're going to create tonight or today, <laughs> I guess, depending on where you are, it could be day or night now. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. You never know when somebody's watching the videos. <laughs> this is true. So this is the layout that we're going to create right now with Copper Canyon. You can use whatever papers you have in your stash, but this is the double Rick Rack. And look at that effect. And as we're creating, you're going to see what a difference this makes because you're going to see this without the double Rick Rack. And then you're going to see what it looks like when you add it onto the page. It's really cool. That is gorgeous. I just love this paper pack. <laughs> oh, that that paper pack, that secret box was just out of the park. Awesome. Oh. So was the most recent secret box too. The it's bright not, and light. <gasps> yeah, yeah. The the most recent one has those light uh the brighter colors. Yeah. And I love it. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're gonna take out our trimmer and this okay. sheet. I'm not going to cut anything off of this. This is going to be my base. So I'm just going to put okay. that to the side. And I'm going to use this um, lighter color. This is what I'm going to cut. And it's, <laughs> it's really simple. I'm not going to lie. So our first cut is going to be at the four inch mark. So just go ahead and just give that a nice cut. And then the next cut is going to be at the two inch mark. All right, now this, the rest of the paper here is for another layout of your choosing. The next time you're creating, we're just gonna use these for today. I'm gonna put my trimmer down here and now I'm gonna take my cardstock and my border maker system. Now, if you don't have the border maker system, you are missing out on probably, in my opinion, one of the best scrapping tools out there. It's my go-to speed tool. I just love this whole system. I do so too. Wait, don't you? Do you use it a lot? I use mine all the time. I, and yep. I tell people if you if you're only getting one decorative tool, this is the one to get. Yep. Of course, I think you should have them all, but <laughs> for sure. Yeah. All right. So there are three different things involved with the border maker system. So the first one is the housing unit. And the one thing I want you to notice is up here, there is a line. See this white line? Just note yes. that that's there, and we're going to show you what that does later, okay? And what you're going to do is take one of your cartridges. I'm using, obviously, the double rick rack, 
and see these two little prongs that stick out. So mm -hmm. you're gonna put the flat side into this little cartridge and it clicks right in, really simple, all right? So that's all set up to be used. Now these two little prongs here that I just showed you are gonna go into all these little indentations in the paper guide, all right? Mm -hmm. And that's how you're gonna get down the whole piece. And you'll see that in a second. So to start, I'm gonna open up my tray and that was located down here. And I just flipped it up and it snaps into place. I'm gonna lift to the magnetic bar and I'm gonna go ahead and slide a piece of paper in all the way to the end of the tray. And once I have that paper in, I'm gonna click the tray back into position on the bottom, all right? Now I'm gonna take my housing unit and remember these little prongs here and also this little white line I showed you before, <clears throat> that's gonna match up with all these little, I don't know what you call them, nodules on mm -hmm. the paper guide. So let me pull that closer so you can see it. See yeah. these nodules here, all right? So there are six and you're gonna punch six times. So right now the white line on the housing unit is lined up to the first nodule and I'm gonna punch and I'm gonna gently move to the second one and punch. And you just have to be very gentle with some of the cartridges because some of the designs are intricate and delicate and you don't wanna break them as you go. So just be very simple, take your time. There's no rush. It's only six punches and then you're done. So it goes pretty quick. And look, now we have these two really cool borders all set and ready to go. So now we're ready to adhere everything to our base page. Let me get this out of the way. There's it, some of the punches leave some cool trash too but <laughs> they do even this little skinny strip that came out of it would be a great little border somewhere you know it just gives a uh -huh. little bit of uh effect which is what you're looking for really mm -hmm. all right so we're gonna go ahead and <laughs> i gotta find my tape runner note to self my mouse is not my tape runner <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a mouse with this computer, so I don't ever make that mistake, but boy, I certainly lose my tape runner on, you know, my desk. You know, it gets like thrown around with other things, whether it's an, an eraser or a ruler or whatever. So, so I feel I your have, pain. <laughs> I have two laptops down here uh, and each one has a mouse. So between the two mites and all the different tape runners I have, I never know what I'm going to have in my hand next. <laughs> so cool. we are just tacking down our two inch strip and our four inch strip and just put one on each side and you can do it however you want. Um, all right. And once you have that done, now, it's a pretty page as is. I mean, there's nothing wrong with this. You could certainly use it just like this. But Absolutely. now what I'm going to do, let me come over here. I'm going to use my, my mat here. I'm just going to put some tape runner on all of this. So what I'm using now is a silicone mat and it's great when you're using the repositionable tape runner because the repositionable tape runner will only stick to the paper and not to the mat. So it's very nice. Definitely. So now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put these borders down and I think I just went a little off the page there so let me just fix that
That is amazing the way it just breaks right. the design. Did you just say it wakes up the design? Yes. <laughs> I love that. It's so, that's like the perfect way to say it. It just wakes well, up you. You know, those of us from South Carolina, we got some good saying sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and here you go. So look at that. Look how it just makes everything jump. It wakes up your layout. <laughs> I love it, Michelle. That's so cool. And I already had one done. So let's just look at this side by side now. So right here, there's a couple of different things you can do because this is a pretty easy and versatile layout. So mm -hmm. you can put it side by side like this where the, the two two-inch strips meet. Mm-hmm. You can also turn it so you oh, can have, yes. so you can go side to side. Uh -huh. You can turn it again so the two larger sizes meet and the two smaller sides are on the outside edges. And you can turn it one more time. And now we have the smaller edges at the top larger edge at the bottom. And again, look how it all just works so beautifully. So this is a really simple, easy layout and using the border maker system wakes it up. <laughs> <laughs> How's that for being spontaneous and going with the flow? <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, Michelle, I'm yeah. not sure how to do a double spotlight or maybe you just want maybe we should just go oh, back yeah. to mine we can do page can do that i want to show you what i did um and again this was not rehearsed whatsoever but i already had one finished and then i made another one and i did it opposite so that so that i could create oh. a double page spread like Ooh, this that looks awesome <laughs> so this is from the something blue collection uh -huh. And I, as you can see, it's just very springy and it, it has nothing to do with weddings unless, you know, you feel like hearts, ha this has like the faint little hearts. But other than that, I mean, it, it could be for anything. It, I think it could even be for little baby boys because, you know, there's nothing wrong with flowers being around little baby boys. But anyway, I just think this is such a pretty paper pack and I love your design love 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 it um oh and one other thing you used two different papers and you just used the front and the back for the for the two pieces the the four inch strip and the two inch strip so nope i used the same side i think i i did not use oh, oh, oh. That. I'm, yeah. I'm sorry i'm sorry okay i was saying it wrong but still you use the same paper right i, I used did. I used two different papers only because I liked the um the way the the white background floral contrasted with the dark background floral. I see and what you're saying. Yep. It was no it's beautiful. And it still goes with these hearts. So if I had if the dark background floral on the back was a color or, or whatever that I wanted to use, I could have done that. But I just I just used a completely different one altogether. So anyway, I just wanted to point that out real quick. Yeah. Anyway. So, <laughs> I'm just so excited. We made two fun layouts. Quick and easy. So, so fun. I'm bring you and me back up on the screen. Okay. <laughs> well there we go Oops. Oh, that's just me hey <laughs> all right real quick massachusetts or south carolina <laughs> um yeah there you go there you go, there you go. okay yeah yeah 
Oh, so I am so thankful that we got this. Um, we got this started. We've talked about it for a couple of months now, and we were ready to to jump in. And we look forward to doing this every month from now on until we're a hundred years old. Exactly. <laughs> And we're so thankful that you each took the time to watch, um, spread the word, you know, have people join in. And um, my YouTube channel is Christy's Cropping and Creating. And Michelle's is Fitzy's Fabulous Scrapbooks. <laughs> and with that, until next month. Um, Hold on. We'll don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channels. That helps yes. us get all of what you just saw out to as many people as possible. There are a lot of scrappers out there or people who are thinking about scrapping and have never tried it. And I think if they see how easy these layouts are, they're going to want to join us, right? Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. So hit that like button, hit that subscribe button for Christie's. Wait, say yours again, Christy. <laughs> and it's uh, it all begins with a K. So Christy's cropping and creating. And I am Fitzy's Fabulous Scrapbooks. So please subscribe to our channels. And remember, when you hit the subscribe button, a little bell icon will pop up. And just hit uh, personalize it to your liking. But you want to be able to get our notifications when our videos come out. So hit that Absolutely. subscribe button. <laughs> Absolutely. And um, there is a new launch that just came out today and a promo. So today is what? Monday, May 20th? Yes. And the promo is spend $135 and get a choice of one of two bundles. Each of the bundles has a punch and some stickers. And I think there might be some other items too. I don't remember. So go check that out on either of our websites. Christy, yes. what's your website? My website is creativememories.com forward slash user forward slash K-R-I-S-T-I-B-O-L-I-N. Thank you. And my <laughs> website is creativememories.com forward slash user forward slash Michelle Fitz. Two L's in Michelle. <laughs> All right. And you can reach out to me by email anytime by uh, emailing Fitzy's Fabulous Scrapbooks at gmail.com. Your email, Christy? It's my name, uh, Christy Bolin at gmail.com. And again, that's K R I S T I B O L I N at gmail.com. <laughs> and oh, <I'm> sorry, sorted. <laughs> I do have a Facebook group that you can join. It is called FRQ Glitz Girls Scrapbooking Group. And uh, it's run by myself and two of my team members. You'll have to answer a few questions. But after those questions are answered, it proves to us you're not a scammer or a bot. And we'll let you right in. Mm -hmm. All right. Perfect. Anything else you would like to add, Christy? Um, the only other thing, Michelle mentioned the uh, Facebook group that she has. I don't have a public Facebook group, but you can reach out to me by email and ask me about joining um, Christie's Cropper's subscription group. And um, I can get you in that way. Or I can, for that matter, I can let you in my private Creative Memories customer group. So, um, yeah, I just I've never taken the time to set up the questionnaire and all that kind of thing to help avoid the scammers but maybe that should be next on my list but yeah yeah anyway. it's a good thing to do and yeah. I also have a subscription group with my team it's called crop crew we've been doing it since July of 2020 and it's mm -hmm. still going strong so you can reach out to me by email or message me on Facebook and I can give you more information on how to join um, but it's a minimal fee. It's only $25 a quarter and you get a class every week. So Perfect. I think we have said all we can. So we're going to. I think that's it. We're yeah. Gonna, and I don't know about you, but I'm going to go have some chowder for dinner. <laughs> I think I'll go have some fried chicken and sweet tea. <laughs> that 
fantastic. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, anyway, thank okay. you again for watching, everybody. Thanks for joining us. See you next time. Bye for Bye. now.